Hello and welcome to my talk on Marcus, our new drop-in compatible allocator replacement designed to prevent use after free attacks in low-level languages, thus providing temporal safety for the heap at only 10% performance overhead. So first, what is a use after free attack? In this example on screen, the programmer calls delete on a pointer which is looked up in the object's V table. This creates a dangling pointer to the region of memory the object was stored in. An attacker can reallocate the region of memory that it was stored in and change its contents. Then, if the programmer mistakenly calls delete again on that dangling pointer, the attacker can instead redirect it instead of to the delete function to its own custom code, taking control of the program. These vulnerabilities have plagued low-level software and have been one of the most common classes of vulnerabilities in both browsers and kernels. So, how does Marcus prevent the use of these attacks? We keep the programmer's manual freeze in quarantine, preventing their reuse until we can be sure that no dangling pointers to them remain. programmer freeze get placed in a quarantine list, which fills up until we reach a certain threshold, in our case a quarter of the heap, though this is configurable depending on the properties of your system, how much you want to trade off performance for memory overhead. Once this has been filled up, we then perform a garbage collector style marking procedure. We walk through the stack, BSS, data and register segments to find anything that looks vaguely like a pointer, any integers that point into the heap, anything that the programmer could be using to index into that heap, because we don't know the difference between pointers and integers in the standard C and C++ model. Anything that plausibly looks like a pointer, we mark. We mark that location in the heap, and thus we find a reference to it. Then, we follow the transitive links that those references create into the heap and follow any pointers inside those objects and any pointers inside those objects transitively until we've marked everything that is potentially accessible by the programmer. Finally, we compare those against the locations specified in the quarantine list. Any that aren't marked can be safely returned to a free list for reallocation. Any that are marked are left in the quarantine to be checked again later. So that's the basic scheme. We vet the programmer's manual freeze, meaning we never accidentally delete objects the programmer wouldn't have freed, unlike a conventional garbage collector in a low level language such as C or C++ where pointers can be hidden. And we don't perform pointless marking procedures when there is little memory to be reclaimed as we know how much potential data there is to be freed since the programmer provides this from their original calls to free. Still, there are optimizations we can do on this technique to improve performance. The first is early on mapping. For large allocations that spread across an entire virtual page, we can place the virtual address in quarantine while unmapping it from the physical address freeing the physical frame to be reused. Then we can safely remap that physical address to a new allocation while causing a virtual memory fault if any dangling pointer tries to use the old virtual address. That way we can immediately reclaim the physical memory without having to wait for quarantine while saving the virtual reclamation for later and we can reuse the physical memory even if dangling pointers still remain to the virtual address space. Now, one issue that happens in many allocators, including the berm allocator that we build Marcus on top of, is that this level of quarantining causes fragmentation in the allocator. This is exacerbated because of the long time between reuse of an address space in a quarantining allocator, this gives a buildup of lots of very small objects, far more than usual, both in quarantine and scattered around free lists, that ideally we should clear out for reuse of objects of new sizes, uh, 
Uh, but by default, we don't because by default, uh, programs tend to reuse small objects very quickly, so there's no point. Still, we can solve this issue in Marcus. At the end of a quarantine, we use the number of marks to individual blocks in memory to work out whether to try to clean them up. If there are no marks to a block, then it is likely that all of its elements are on either the quarantine waiting to be freed or are somewhere inside a free list. So we take the ones in quarantine and add them to a list of reallocatable objects. We then walk the free lists, also adding in any old free regions that are in blocks we think are entirely empty. Finally, we empty any entirely cleared blocks to be reused for objects of new sizes and place the rest of the unmarked quarantine into the appropriate free list. So we implemented a prototype Marcus allocator, which can be dropped into any application using load preload commands as a replacement for the default allocator, while maintaining the same interface and preserving the same guarantees as the existing allocator. This is built on top of the Berm Demos Visor garbage collector. Uh, you can use any other allocator to implement a strategy like this. We built it on top of this one simply because there was already a marking procedure in place for that allocator. We see average execution time overheads of just 10% and memory overheads of 15%. This is considerably lower than the overhead seen in previous work. Oscar, which uses a page table mechanism, PSweeper and Dangsam, which keep track of pointer locations to nullify, and CR count, a reference counting mechanism, all show much higher average overheads in both memory and performance. We also see that Marcus doesn't feature any large spikes in execution time or memory consumption, staying below 2x for all spec 2006 applications. If we look in detail then at some of the more allocation intensive workloads for which Marcus has to do the most work, then we can see the impact of these optimizations, the optimizations that we talked about earlier. If we allow marking procedures to occur whenever an application runs out of memory, like you would in a standard garbage selector, then performance and memory overhead become unacceptably high for these worst case workloads. This is because Marcus performs lots of ineffective marking procedures when there is no data to be freed, for example, in Zalang BMK, and dangling pointers cause lots of memory to be unfreeable, as in DLII. Page unmapping deals with the latter problem, as any large region pointed to by a dangling pointer can be immediately reclaimed, and it's the large regions that dangling pointers really matter to because a singling dangling pointer to a large region kills off a large amount of memory to, that you can't reuse, whereas a dangling pointer to a small amount of memory uh, doesn't really do very much at all. Delaying the marking procedure until the quarantine is filled solves the latter problem, the problem of performance. Bringing down the overheads, but it adds the new problem of increased memory consumption due to fragmentation. Because we don't uh, perform a marking procedure for a very long time, we end up with lots of small objects that clog up the allocator and make it use lots of pointless memory. Also, marking when a quarter of the heap is full isn't the only option, as I mentioned earlier. We can trade off that overhead to use more memory in exchange for lower performance. Or we can do the opposite and increase the amount of memory that we use and therefore have to mark less. That also means that we use less CPU time from the parallel marking procedure, which is able to spread itself across multiple cores uh, because we're simply marking a lot less. It depends on the system properties that you're targeting as to which of uh, these points you want to target. We chose 33% uh, memory overhead, i.e. a quarter of the heap uh, to be the point of quarantine, uh, simply because it seemed like a reasonable trade-off. As I just mentioned, uh, 
Marcus does use extra CPU time because of its parallel marking procedure. It is able to parallelize this marking procedure across all of your system's cores so that it takes less time. However, we see from this graph that the extra CPU time it uses is typically very slight. Uh, it's often nothing at all effectively, and it never exceeds 20% across an entire run, even for the most allocation intensive workloads. On average, across spec, we only use 2% extra CPU time by targeting multiple cores at the same time. So that means that it doesn't really slow down other applications running on the system, and yet means that we don't have to face as much slowdown as a result. Marcus isn't able to actively revoke dangling pointers. And that means that if there are dangling pointers, it can't reuse virtual address space. Still, that usually doesn't affect the performance of Marcus. Dangling pointers are fairly rare across the entire address space within an application. We see here that um, full Marcus almost always is able to reclaim almost everything. The exception is Zarnik BMK, where it still does relatively well. However, a lot of that is down to the page unmapping ability, the ability to unmap very large regions of memory if they have a dangling pointer to them. DLII in particular and ASTAR both have dangling pointers to very large regions, even if they have very few dangling pointers. That means that without that page unmapping, we wouldn't be able to use this passive strategy of seeing if there are pointers and if there are leaving the allocation there to not be reused. Uh, it's the page on mapping that means that we can do that. Marcus also works very well for more modern multi-threaded workloads. We have here the results of uh, spec speed 2017 running over OpenMP, where we get a very similar slowdown to what we got for spec 2006, uh, actually with uh, similar workloads causing the worst slowdown, Omnet, VP, and Telenc, BMK, but also with some newer workloads like WRF showing significant overheads as well, but these are still relatively minor overall. So that was an introduction to Marcus, our new temporarily safe allocator that is a drop-in compatible replacement for your existing allocator. There are more performance comparisons in the paper, including SPEC 2017 and Firefox, um, various other benchmarks, and there's code up on GitHub so you can run this on your own applications. More generally, this is a strategy that can be applied to any allocator for low overhead, pain-free temporal safety. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please email us or ask us during the S&P session. Thank you.